Hi, I'm Daniel with Plumpy Thimble. Today I'd like to talk to you about gift giving and just how important it is to do so. Because the better gift that you give to someone, the better gift you're probably going to get from them. What you're doing when you give a gift is you're giving an obligation and you want to do that just right. You want to make sure that you don't give them something so impressive that there's no chance of getting your return back by what they give you. You don't want to outdo them, but you want to place enough obligation on them so that they have to give you something that really benefits you the best. At least that's kind of the theme of the game we're looking at today. Spoil Me Not is the Korean and English language re-release of Nikt Daiban. The goal of this game is to earn the most points. It's comprised of a deck of cards and four different suits. The cards in each suit range from 1 to 10, with five special modifier cards in each as well. These special cards can either make all points in that suit negative, multiply the score by two, or cause the total score of the entire suit to be zero regardless of any other cards collected over the course of the game. At the end of the game, players will score each suit separately, then add the total of each suit together for their final score. The deck is dealt out to all players. The starting player chooses one card from their hand and places it face up on the table, placing the wooden token on top of the card. Every other player chooses a card from their own hand and places it face down in front of them. When all players have made their choice, they reveal their card simultaneously. The player with the token in front of them then selects any one of the face up cards. The player whose card they selected then gets to choose the next face up card. This continues until there are no more cards. The big rule in this section is that the card with the token on it has to be taken last. Therefore, if a player offers up a terrible card, it's in everyone else's best interest to try not to be the last card picked. The game continues until all players run out of cards. My complaints with this game are few. The theme, as much as I love it, is thin. Players are choosing the right gift to give each other, but in reality this is purely a game about numbers and positioning yourself and getting the best option available. This game is pretty cutthroat as well. You aren't simply trying to score high points, you're trying to cause your opponents to take copious amounts of negative points. If confrontation isn't really something you're interested in, I'd caution you before looking into this game. Now to put it bluntly, I love this game. It's been a very long time since I've played a simple card game and came away with such a positive feeling towards it. Sure, the art and theme are sweet and really do appeal to me, but as I said, that's only a thin veneer in terms of what this game was. When you're placing out a card that no one wants, you're essentially forcing the other players to offer an incentive to pick them first. That is unless they've all non-verbally decided to screw each other over and everyone offers a bad card in return. This game is so much more than just numbers getting thrown out randomly. Reading your opponent and weighing what they currently have with what they might want gives you so many intuitive choices and decisions to make. I can't accurately describe why I'm so smitten with this game. The trading mechanic is new, so perhaps that's part of it, but I think it's really just a huge mix of everything. The game is incredibly simple to teach and plays quickly enough. If you can get more than two players, this is easily an Uno or Red 7 weight game, but way better than either in my opinion. Really, it's probably one of my top new games this year, and I can't recommend it highly enough.